Finally! Someone's been doing something I've been wanting to see for a long time. Hello and welcome everybody, Josh Yarviner down here at Elkhart, Indiana today at the Vibe facility getting a look at this 22RK floor plan. And this is very interesting. It's almost like, it's probably more similar to like a 17 MKE Imagine, but there's a ton of people who make a floor plane like this right now. And it's almost like Vibe took notes from each and every one of them and picked and chose their favorite parts of it and amalgamated a really cool camper here that is just different enough. That's where Vibe has really been carving out their name lately here, is they're finding very popular floor plans that maybe they didn't invent originally, and that's okay, but they're coming up with new inventive ways of executing these floor plans. For instance, Instead of a front Murphy bed, this one gives us just a fixed front walker on bed, albeit a short queen. If I was gonna wave a magic wand, I would give this thing a true queen bed. That's my one wish for this. And I would love to hear from you what you dislike and, and, and like as we go. But in addition to that, they, they had room to give it like an extended sofa slide. So it does have a fold down armrest in that uh, theater seat to give you either cuddle compliance or population control, whichever you prefer. The kitchen is amazing because they gave it one giant chunk, one flat level of huge solid surface countertop with instead of um, a uh, like, like a dinette or a table and chairs, it's what I like to call a little breakfast bar. It's just they're repurposing part of the kitchen countertop with a Euro style tilt open window for max airflow with a bug screen overlooking the campsite of the RV with a pair of stools that come with the RV. Still managed to include a lot of kitchen drawer storage and everything while also including a little electric space heat and Tootsie Toaster, taller ceiling, more headroom in the shower and a lot of other really cool things. This is a really good floor plan. It provides monster travel access. Really, the only knock I have against it is just that short camp queen. And as we go, I'm gonna actually close the slide up in road mode and see if maybe it's true queen capable. I'd love it if you hung out with me. So I wasn't exactly sure where to begin here. And when I run into situations like that, when in doubt, I sit it out. And uh, I'll just drop my backside into what I consider probably the one of the more primary seating zones and give you a little bit of a you know a driver's point of view of this thing as it were so if you're sitting over here at the sofa this is kind of what it's going to look like and what it showcases is you have really nice campsite window coverage but also if somebody does happen to be sitting at the little breakfast dining bar the the way the tv's location on this it's maybe not perfectly ideal for any one position in the rv but it's never in the wrong location for any area in the RV with the exception of maybe the bathroom. But hey, if you're in the bathroom, you know, you, you watch TV on your phone like a, well, like a normal person. <laughs> <laughs> I just kind of noticed that is a, uh, a wider entry door, which is a nice touch. And these have a little bit taller ceilings. They're six foot nine tall with a 15,000 BTU air conditioner. I think this is one of the very few that may not have the option of being upgraded to um, 50 amp and having a second air conditioner. I just don't think it's big enough. It doesn't quite have enough like vents in the ceiling and things like that. Now it's a little bit of a hallway style kitchen. But if you look at the storage and especially the prep space, this is just a monster kitchen, especially considering with where they located that two burner stove, which I love the fact that it's not a big giant three burner. Now that does mean this RV doesn't have a full propane oven. It does have a convection microwave air fryer uh, up top there, but it doesn't have a normal traditional propane oven. Um, but, but what I'm getting at is where they placed that, it allowed them to basically keep all of the countertop one flat level. And the RV does ship with these uh, elevated kind of thankfully padded butt stools over here. And there's power outlets like right uh, basically at the knee level. So if you wanted to maybe use that like a little bit of a, a laptop desk station or something like that, or a little writer's inspiration nook, you got the perfect little place to do it. And this is a tilt open Euro style window. It's the only window in the entire RV that does that but it does also have a bug screen to help keep the uh, creepy crawlies out if you want some extra fresh air. In case you were kind of curious, there's a, a little bit of a half and half uh, for you, which my wife says is nowhere near as good in her coffee. Half and half, by the way. Um, pet friendly. 
No carpet in the slide, no vents in the floor. They do a good job of keeping this thing friendly in that area. Something else I noticed, your living room has like one main light switch and your kitchen zone also has its own dedicated light switch, which I think was uh, kind of cool. Over here in the slide, this is something that's very interesting to me. If you notice, it's an asymmetrical uh, extended slide. It's not just a sofa in the slide out but it does have breeze windows all the way around. They had room for that extra side stand over there. Personally, I would be willing to have a small side stand on either side of the sofa. Um, I would actually like that slide to peel back about six inches and make room for a true queen bed up front instead of the short queen that we're looking at here. If I could make one magic wand alteration to this RV at my own little whim, that would be it right there. Um, now, the bed is, I guess you'd technically call it walk-around, although the side over here on the left is far less walk around a bowl, as it were. I do like the flip-flop shop shoe garage right down by the door, right where you walk inside. And I'm going to get this all opened up for you in a minute. But what's kind of cool is you have great power outlet usage on both sides, or placement rather, on both sides of the bed. The right side that we're staring at is easy to see because it's open. They go with an asymmetrical bedroom so that if someone's claustrophobic, they can sleep on that side. And if you're not, they still include, thankfully, some headboard power pockets over here. And you may have noticed that big brown cushion thing wiggle a little bit when I bumped the mattress. Thankfully, that can move around and it's never going to be stuck in your face. But this is another one of the... Oops, I'm tripping over that stool behind me. I've done that six times recording footage in this RV so far, by the way. I, I've been counting. Not 37, but six. It's a fixed bed. It's not any sort of Murphy bendy bed situation. And as a result, that means that this RV is a little bit longer, a little bit heavier than some of the other builders of a floor plan like this. The only other uh, builder I've ever seen make a layout like this without a Murphy bed was Transcend. Uh, so this is the only laminated RV with this type of layout I've ever seen like this. Now, uh, looking at the storage here, it is nice that there's full storage overhead, but it is a uh, gravity drop, auto-close kind of overhead cabinet sort of situation. I do like the wicker, wicker basket skin down below the bed. That is just, that really functions very nicely as a little bit of a dresser. Now, over in the slide, you got your sofa there with that fold-down armrest. It does have a USB plug in it, so it's either cuddle compliant or population controlling as you please. And something else they did here that I think only Alta has done that I've seen previously is it does include a big pantry, and frankly, a very big pantry over there. And it's not one that you have to, like, climb over the sofa to get to. Uh, I think Alta has something kind of like that. Uh, the kitchen overall, though, just has some really good, big, awesome, respectable storage space. Um, what's funny is you may have noticed... In the bedroom closet, you might have noticed how there was a, uh, a wastebasket uh, stuffed in there. I wasn't trying to be cute and, and show you how big or deep that was, although I think it makes a good barometer. There's actually no place in this RV that is really dedicated to house a wastebasket, despite the fact that a wastebasket is included with this camper. So that, to me, was a very interesting series of choices. I don't know that I fully understand it. I also don't know that I have to fully understand it necessarily. Now, what I haven't really looked for so far is like, where are all the kitchen outlets? I suspect they're under the overhead cabinets because within uh, a, a laminated wall, inch and a half laminated wall, you cannot flush mount and recess power outlets. If I get down here, oh my, Oh, okay. I thought for a second there were absolutely no kitchen outlets, and I'm like, that's a major, major problem. But I'm only seeing one set there. Are there... Okay, there's one more set back here in this little appliance corner. So, like, that could make a nice little spot for, like, your, your Keurig, um, air fryer, toaster oven, something like that would go very nicely back in that pocket. And I do appreciate the fact... It's funny, the 26RK vibe, they actually waste space in this upper left corner. Now, here in the 22RK vibe, they don't waste it. Is it difficult to access? Yes, a little bit. But is it wasted? No. Um, you know, it, it's it's not awesome, but it, it's, it's something. It's better than nothing. Sliding privacy door there to get you uh, into the bathroom, uh, by the way, or to close yourself in the bathroom. And I'm not going to... Th th this shocked me. With this having a taller ceiling, I expected to be able to stand in that shower and my head not hit the ceiling. I'm a little over six foot one. I even took my hat off and I was kind of shocked. I'm glad I didn't stand up quickly. I bonked my nugget in that thing. And I don't know what it is about this floor plan in particular, but I got to looking 
and for some reason they have the the bathroom shower platform built up now maybe there's an engineering or like health and safety code violation reason that they had to do it that way i don't know all i know is that i did bump my head in that so i thought i'd just make sure you know again whether it's awesome or not i i want to give you clear candid information the um space around the toilet though that was a pleasant surprise that was far better than i i, I kind of expected so you know, the bathroom was uh, kind of a little bit of a case of hit and miss. But see, that's the thing. I've never found the one RV that does everything for everybody. And that's why sometimes, even though it's a similar floor plan to what somebody else might have done, I like taking the time to showcase this stuff so you can figure out which one works best for you. This, I think, though, is one of the cool things on this floor plan. It is exceptionally travel friendly and functional. Now your chairs, you strap to the bed as I'm demonstrating here, but if you need to stop and have a sandwich or something, you got your dining spot right there. And that is something, again, I've never seen somebody else who makes this floor plan do that. Since it's a fixed bed, there's no question on whether or not the bed is accessible and functional in transit, which Murphy beds sometimes do. I'm looking at this and I'm thinking you could probably squish a true queen bed in there, but I really want to exercise caution when I say that and uh, make sure that it's not going to be something that's going to fight with and interfere with your slide system. That's the last thing you want to do is put extra stress on an RV slide because that will very quickly cripple everything. But back to front to, to back again, this is a fantastic traveling friendly model. I give it pretty much like A plus travel and access. Now Vibe makes a bunch of models like that big 28RL right there, which is quite long. This is one of the shorter ones. And one of the nicer things about that, more easily towable, and they still use a, a bigger set of axles, which leaves it with a decent cargo carrying capacity. Actually, that's one of the things I think the smallest Vibe, the 19RB No Slide does well. It has like almost 3,000 pounds of cargo capacity. I don't think this one quite does that, but it ain't bad, you know? That is a cable pulley slide system in case you were kind of curious. Um, not everybody is good at necessarily picking that up just off camera. Thought I'd throw that in there. Magnet holdbacks and a big pass-through baggage uh, compartment go to both sides of the RV with a simple little docking center here and I like that they actually do include some lights in that front compartment that's one of those easy to miss little details that not every brand does and if you're actually trying to set this sucker up uh, you know uh, um, what am I wanting to say my brain Wow Wow obviously I don't edit my videos but I, my brain just just died I, I have no idea what I was getting ready to say because my I was moving on to the next thing. Anyway, up front, right behind the 20-pound propane tanks, we have that battery disconnect switch. One of the cool things there is the now standard 200-watt solar package will continue to tend and charge your battery even when your disconnect is flipped so that, you know, you're not drain in your battery with the lights in the refrigerator or something like that. Although I do like how the fridge they're currently using does have just an easy off switch. Some of them not so much it feels like you got to go to defcon 5 to like beep, boop, 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 beep. you like you know turn all the stuff off so not quite a issue there um the underbelly it is enclosed it's also forced air heated and they do have holding tank heaters and you can see that uh power stabilizer coming off the corner right there everything on this basically the, the idea is push button ease and simplicity power tongue jack power corner stabilizers power awning with led lighting and speakers practically mounted on the roof all the way up high where i really personally don't like them but that is my opinion man that's just my two cents there you know uh, working our way around, you might notice one different window on this. That is where your little dining bar is located because they allow you to like tilt that right open and almost like pass things in and out of the RV instead of going in and out of the door, although the door is literally right next to us, so it doesn't seem like it's that big of a deal. But um, remember, there's also that bug screen there. And this, I thought, was just going to be a little bit of a storage compartment. But what I found very interesting is that it is an additional 12 volt, uh, 12 volt TV point. I, I couldn't decide what words I wanted to use and what came out of my mouth is an amalgamation of stupidity. Pretty impressive, I know. I did that all on the fly. If you don't care about the outside entertainment, take the TV out. Um, I, it, it's standard, so you know it's not like you can order it without it. You're not going to get any sort of credit doing it. But that little drawbridge style drop down door, if you don't like that, you can always just pull these little pins and let the door drop all the way down vertically. Uh, but I always like that because I think it creates like a little table shelf point for the RV. Now the wide stand stability axles are going to help this thing tow 
smoother and more nicely with less bucking, chucking, and jumping around. Um, those are import tires. Some folks like to know what kind of tires things are running on. And the uh, wide stance suspension package is not a replacement for a proper anti-sway hitch. Don't ever let somebody talk you into that. I've seen people get into that trap and then they end up white knuckles stressed um, you know, towing down the road. First of all, your lives are on the line. Secondly, you have an expensive vehicle and trailer uh, all in that package. Spend a couple hundred bucks, get yourself a proper uh, safety hitch and you will not regret it. Now, instead of a grill or griddle pulling straight out under the standard little refrigerator there, it is just a dog dish sink. So it's not a fully plumbed sink, but it kind of can't be because sliding out from under it is an induction cooktop. Now, if you don't care about that, you can just use it as like counter prep space. And when you're done with it, it just all kind of beep, slides away. But did you notice contained in the little dog dish was one of those coily sprayer hoses? And did you notice how I have not cut this video because there was another one of those up in the docking center. So they actually give you uh, two hoses, one for the sprayer port off the back and one for the docking center. I think that's very, very cool. They also are prepped and ready for a telescopic removable ladder to get you up there to that fully walkable roof. And I do appreciate up top how it does have um, a, uh, a white AC shroud to just kind of help maximize efficiency in the, uh, the hotter, sunny summer weather. One last really cool factoid here. They are running on a, uh, a single sewer outlet. Uh, well, that's, wow, again, that's not what I meant to say, but every time I say one last thing, I think of one other thing, and then my brain mashed them together. So it's a single sewer outlet. All your holding tanks dump out right here, but um, it's also not a Lippert chassis. Some folks like to kind of know that little detail. It is made by Norco. It's a huck-bolted aircraft style frame. It's actually a Z chassis. It's a little bit lighter, and um, some folks feel stronger, but depending on who you talk to, it seems like anyone who makes a chassis, it's crazy. They all claim theirs is the best. Isn't that weird? There's no chassis builder that says, yeah, that guy's chassis is better than ours. Funny how that works. So what do you think of her? You know, it's certainly similar to some other things that are out there, but I would venture to say it's not identical. And with things like that little dining bar, outdoor entertainment, the fixed bed instead of a Murphy that I know some people prefer, I think that this one has its own wings and its own legs. And that's why we carry so many different brands at Bish's RV, you know, because we've yet to find the one that does all the things exactly how everybody wants. And if you can figure that out, we will pay you good money to join our team. <laughs> <laughs> Until then though, I'll leave you links in the description to check for pricing and availability on these. And I will also leave you links to a lot of other videos to other people who've made similar floor plans, whether it's Ember, Imagine, Jay Feather, and just Surveyor, so many other brands. And they're all really cool for different reasons. I'd love to hear which one you would go with and why after you watch a couple of those, whether you leave that note on this video or any of those, no big deal. Short of that though, take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping everyone.